Mr. Watley. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the board, Mr. Superintendent, staff, um, I wasn't here last week. My, I have a family member that was in the hospital, but I was able to catch the uh, videotape. Thanks to our great folks at uh, 10 that it, you know upload that. I'm not sure who the individual is, but it allowed me to the next day to sit back and watch. And I was really encouraged uh, with the contrast and comparison of the IG uh, demonstration. Thank you, Madam Brown, for you know, at least getting that started. And, uh, you know, Mr. Chu, what his functions, what he can and cannot do. Uh, and, and it was, it's encouraging to hear the board ask the right questions of both not only the IG's office, who sound like, you know, hey, I'll take you if you want me, but if you don't want me, that's okay, I'm kind of busy. Um, so I, I did kind of catch that out of her. And then, you know, Mr. Chu is saying, hey, we need some help. And I heard that as evident tonight. Uh, you know, I'm not even going to go too into detail about the $38,000 on the pending investigation. Uh, but in the past two years, the monies that have been spent with outside auditing firms, it sounds like a real good down payment for the IG's office to get involved. Um, I I think that $38,000, you may see an amendment come back to you. I've worked fraud investigations as a, as a retired fraud detective in million-dollar frauds, and they're not cheap, especially if you're using uh, uh, forensic auditors or, or involved in that. And it's just not a cheap process. Um, and, and the timeline uh, may be not what you expect down the road. But beside that, I would, I would encourage you all to really take a strong look at the IG's office because that does take out uh, any situation that the board member the, uh, may have as far as any internal issues. Um, the IG office would have the subpoena power. Uh, I don't know if council has told you, but there, there was a suggestion to give our uh, internal auditor subpoena power. Um, uh, statutorily, you don't just raise your hand and say, here you go, you have subpoena power. And I think we have a, a former, you know, U.S. attorney up there and a lawyer up there. It doesn't work that way uh, uh, with the government as far as giving somebody subpoena power. Okay. Um, I, I am encouraged that the IG, uh, and this is just not, uh, not an untested idea. Uh, the IG, this is modeled after the IG's office down in Dade County. Uh, Dade County in the past 10 years, I know that they had one example where they were able to recover $24 million. Okay, that in itself would certainly pay. And we've spent almost a whole evening tonight talking about the Hernandez incident when the IG's office could be just actively working this. We wouldn't have to have the discussion. We wouldn't have to have parents, moms, and dads doing this investigation. Because that's essentially what has happened is the moms and dads have actually supplied information. I wish I had that kind of help when I was, you know, a, a law enforcement officer. So I would encourage you to please uh, uh, take a serious look at this IG. I know uh, it's time to do something. It's been a year and a half since this was first discussed when we had the, the legislative body, um, and it's, it's, it's time to do something. Or just say, you know what, guys, we don't want to do it. You know, I'd, I'd like to hear one or the other uh, uh, closely with this IG, but I'm in favor of it. I think the public's in favor of it. And I'm tired of the Palm Beach Post saying we're corruption county. How about let's be in the innovative county and, and move on? Thank you. Thank you. There was <clears throat>